Here's everything you need to know to use auto layout in Figma. Hey guys, it's Kaler. In today's video, we're gonna create a UI card using auto layout, and we're gonna go over the principles and basics of auto layout so you can use it in your UI designs. Let's go ahead and get started. So to get started, I'm gonna grab a rectangle and drag one out holding shift, and we'll size that to 32 by 32 for a nice profile size icon. I'm gonna zoom in so we can see, and then I'm gonna hold option or alt and click and drag to create a duplicate. Then I'll just click and drag to select both of those. And we have two options to turn on auto layout. We can go over here and hit the plus icon, or we can hit the keyboard shortcut, which is shift A. You'll notice now in our layers, we have a frame and this icon lets us know that it is an auto layout. It also reflects the alignment of the children inside of this layout. So if we change that, you'll see the icon changes. So every time you use auto layout, it's going to utilize a frame as the parent element. So that way we can style this if we need to, which we will later in this video. So right away in the auto layout panel, we have the option to set the direction. So we can either set it to a vertical or horizontal layout. And again, we have the option to change the alignment of these. And if I quickly scale down one of our rectangles, you can better see that the children are adjusting to this specified alignment. We can also adjust the space in between our elements in this input field right here, or we can grab a hold of the pink handle in between the elements in our group and just click and drag on that. Since the rectangles I'm designing are for profile icons, I'm gonna go ahead and give them a style, 12 for a border radius, and then I'll throw on a stroke. So one thing with strokes here is if I set this to outside, you'll notice that it's gonna go outside of our auto layout. So our auto layout is not adjusting for that stroke, but we can actually fix that now. So if we click on the frame itself, we can click these three little dots and then you'll see an option for stroke. It's currently excluded, but we can include it in the layout. And you'll notice our layout adjusts to the size of the stroke. To finish off these icons, I'm just gonna throw in some abstract images from Unsplash using the Unsplash plugin. I'll adjust my space in between with the pink handle in the middle, and I'm gonna drag that to a negative eight so they overlap and just copy and paste a few of these and you'll notice our auto layout automatically adjusts for these new icons. Another thing we can do in the advanced settings is we can change the canvas stacking. So right now we have the last element on top. We can swap that to the first on top if we'd like. I'll set that to last on top for now. And now I have a nice overlapped profile icon group. Auto layout can also be useful for buttons, easily creating them with a text layer and then a rectangle in the background and then hitting shift A to upgrade it to an auto layout. With these two input fields at the bottom, we can adjust the padding. So this is the left and right padding or the horizontal padding, and this is the vertical padding. We can also hover over our auto layout and we get these pink handles on each side that will allow us to click and drag and adjust this on individual sides. If I hold option or alt while clicking and dragging, it will adjust both the top and the bottom or the left and the right, depending on which one you're clicking and dragging on. And if you hold shift and alt while you click and drag, it will adjust all four equally at the same time. Also, you can set the individual values. If you click this icon here, you get the left, right, and top and bottom all separate. So you can adjust individual ones if you would like here in this properties panel. For my design, I'm actually not making a button. I'm making a little tag card that just says there's more people other than the one shown. So I'll adjust my text. And then I'm going to hold option or alt and click and drag on the horizontal value to set it to 12. And then for my height, I'm actually going to change the resize option on my frame from hug the content. So right now, if I were to create another line of text, you'll see that this is expanding around the children inside. So it's hugging the content. I'm instead going to change it to a fixed height and I'll make the height value 32 to match the size of our profile icons. I'll just give that a 12 border radius to match our profile icons. Then I can grab this frame, and if I hover over this other auto layout grouping, you'll see this blue line letting me know I can drop it there. I can drop it in between these or on the side. For me, I'm just gonna drag it and drop it there, and it adjusts to that auto layout. So now that we have this, let's give this a name. So I'm gonna double click on that. I'll call it users in group. Let's create a card design with this element. So first we need a title. So I'm just gonna grab some text, call that group name, and I'll give that a heading size font of 20 points. And we'll set that to a medium weight, option or alt to duplicate that. And then we could just go ahead and throw this into an auto layout. The spacing in between four will work. And I'm gonna position this to the top left. And we can adjust this second piece of text to a regular weight 
and we'll drop it down to 12, change the text, and six on the keyboard to lower its opacity to 60%. So we also need an icon for the group. So I'll just go down here, copy and paste one with Control or Command C, Control or Command V, and then we can just drag it out of that grouping and then scale it up to 48 by 48 just to make it a little larger. So we'll select our text auto layout, hold shift and grab that new icon. And we can set that in an auto layout as well. Let's set that to the top left and the space in between I'll drag to 16 points. I'm gonna double click on the name and we'll call that group info. So now that we have this, let's grab both of those auto layouts now and make another auto layout. And we'll call this one card. So I'm gonna hold shift and alt and grab this pink handle at the top and we'll add 16 points of padding all the way around. Let's give this a fill of black and let's give it a border radius of 16. And so really quickly, we've created a card using auto layout. Now we can do a little bit more with resizing to make sure that this card can have multiple variations and not break. So first I'm gonna grab this top grouping, our group info, and I'm gonna set the resizing on the width to a fill container. So if I were to drag this card larger, it's going to fill that container. But I also need to do that to my text grouping for this vertical auto layout. So I'll set the width to fill the container as well. Then I'll grab both of my text fields and I'll also change those to fill container. And then we'll make sure that they're text aligned to the left. And so now if I adjust my text, it auto expands for each new line of text for the title and the description. So our card is nice and responsive for different variations of the card. The next thing I wanna do here is add a chevron, a drop down in the top right so that you can expand and get a little bit more information about this group. So to do that, we can just drag an icon in. So I already have some icons in my assets. I'll just drag that in and we'll fill that to white so we can see it. And if I drag and drop it into my auto layout, it's going to respond to that new child. But I want this to be an absolute positioned element. So we can do that with this icon right here. And if we select that, it's now going to ignore this in the auto layout. So the auto layout will not adjust to this absolutely positioned child. So we can place this anywhere we would like freely and I'm going to do so in the top right corner, 16 points from the top to match the spacing that we have all the way around the card. And since this is an absolute positioned element, it needs to take advantage of constraints. So I'll set that to the right and the top. So now when we adjust this card, it's always gonna be there. We also need to add a little bit of padding onto our info grouping up here at the top, because right now if the text expands, it's gonna overlap onto that drop-down icon. So we can fix that by just grabbing this group. And on the right side, I'll add some padding of 24 points so that it doesn't ever overlap the icon that's 24 by 24. So now when I adjust my group name and text, it will never go over top of that icon. So for example, I'll throw our newly created card here in this app design that I'm working on. I'll update the colors and the information. It's currently responding to the children inside of it. And we can create multiple variations of this card for different groups if we need to. And it looks really nice inside of this app design. So in this video, we created this awesome UI card design using auto layout in Figma. And we also went over the basics and principles of using auto layout. So now you can go and create different UI elements and utilize this in your Figma designs. I hope you guys found today's tutorial helpful. If you did, make sure you give this video a like, subscribe for more Figma and design related content I upload every single week. In the meantime, check out these related videos. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one.